Hello everyone, I'm Adam Steele from EVO and this is a video where I'm going to help you set your EVO 4, EVO 8 or EVO 16 up with your DAW. Today we're going to be covering GarageBand. First things first, we're going to want to plug in our interface. If it's an EVO 4 or EVO 8, we're going to want to plug the USB-C connection straight into our Mac or PC. If we're using a Mac, it's likely going to be a USB-C to C cable. If it's a PC, it's likely to be a USB-C to A cable. Both work exactly the same, provide exactly the same sound quality. It just depends which end works with your machine. Next, we're going to look at drivers. Whilst it is true that many Macs and PCs will work to some extent with an Evo interface without any extra software, we highly recommend that you get the drivers from the EVO website. These will give you the best functionality, the most performance with your DAW, and the best overall experience. So head to evo.audio in your browser. So here we are at the evo.audio website, and we're going to go to the top to products, and select the audio interface from here that is exactly the one that you own. In my case here, it's the EVO 4. Head down the page a little bit and we will see a Downloads tab. Give this a click. And we bring up a page with the documents, including the manuals if you want to read in detail, and also the drivers at the bottom of the page for Mac and Windows. Select the one that is relevant to you, get that downloaded and install that on your computer, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once the Evo app is installed on your computer, you will now have this running in the top right corner on macOS and in the bottom right on Windows with the letter E. If we give that a click, then we can click show Evo control or to show the mixer for the Evo 8 and Evo 16. The Evo control for the Evo 4 is a nice way to look at exactly the same features that are available on the front of the hardware. With the Evo 8 and 16, the Evo mixer will give you some more control over the more fine aspects that we will cover later on. Now that the drivers are installed, it's time to fire up our door. The first thing that I'm going to do to get sound is plug in a microphone. I'm going to plug this into input 1 on the EVO 4. This process is the same on the EVO 8 and EVO 16. I've plugged in this vocal microphone and it needs two things. It needs power and it needs gain. So what we're going to do is press the number 1, which selects channel 1. And then, first thing I need for this is phantom power. So I'm now going to hit the 48V button for phantom power. And that means this microphone, given a couple of seconds, is now powered. The next thing it needs is gain. And we have two choices there. Either we can do that by hitting number one and then manually selecting the amount of gain that we need from the large knob on the front of the Evo interface, or we can use the smart gain feature. Check out smart gain in the manual and on some of the other videos here. Now that we've got our microphone plugged in and we've got our drivers ready, we're going to open up GarageBand. If you've opened up GarageBand before, you may find that it uses the inbuilt Mac audio by default, and we need to change this to use our Evo 4. So we're going to go into GarageBand at the top and Preferences, and we're going to go to Audio MIDI. And we're going to change our output device to Evo 4 or 8 or 16. And after a couple of seconds, the input device will change as well. They should now be matching. After closing the preferences, we're going to need to make a new track. This project has one in already, so I'm just going to delete that to show you what happens. At this point, it asks me to choose a track type, and I'm going to choose record using a microphone or line input. We could also choose the DI input for guitar or bass at this point, if that was what you were preferring to use. At this point here, we can choose input one in this drop-down list, which is the number that the microphone is plugged into. And by default, we have, I want to hear my instrument as I play and record, which as we hit create, we will see the monitoring. So we have a channel, but we can't hear it yet. If you've been following along, generally speaking, I didn't mention anything about headphones or speakers yet, because I find it to be good practice to only turn on speakers or connect headphones once everything is plugged in and set up correctly. Otherwise we can get pops, clicks, transients that can do horrible things to speakers. We don't want that. So at this point, I'm going to click on the volume knob on the Evo 4. It's the same on the 8 and the 16. 
and I'm going to turn this encoder up until I've got enough level that I'm happy with. Now with this microphone set up ready to go with the correct amount of gain through smart gain or manually and power, our track has a nice green set of bars and the louder I speak, the more that moves. Now by default, this had monitoring turned on, which is this yellow button here. And in GarageBand, we see things like compressor and EQ and sends here, which we can change to suit the sound that we like. Talking of monitoring, it's important to know that there are two different kinds of monitoring and we'll tell you why that's relevant in just a second. The first one is to hear this through GarageBand with this monitoring tab. Now, as we turn that up, you will hear that in your headphones or your speakers and any of this processing down here with the compressor, EQ, anything like that is all applied and you will hear that in the headphones. There is a very tiny amount of delay called latency on there and that's okay. And so that is coming through to your ears. The other option, if you're really particular about that latency thing, is to turn off monitoring here and to go back to either the Evo control with the E in the corner or with the Evo mixer for the Evo 16 and Evo 8. Here we can see the microphone moving the needle, so to speak, and we can now change using the slider here, the fader icon, we can use the, exactly the same button on the Evo 4, just above the volume on the right hand side, to change the amount of the DAW versus the amount of direct input that we hear. So if we move this all the way to the left, we will only hear inputs one and two in the headphones or on the monitors. And if we move it all the way to the right, we will only hear what's coming from GarageBand. If we move this to the middle, we'll hear both in equal measure and then moving this left or right will change the balance of how much of the input versus the sound from GarageBand that we will hear. The reason for me that this is relevant is that there is a thing that I call ghosting, where if you have the input monitoring through the Evo interface that's direct, that's very, very low latency. But if you also have monitoring coming through GarageBand, you'll hear the same thing twice with a very subtle little delay in there that sounds like a kind of chorus effect or a doubling effect, or like there's some sort of ghost. The only way to eliminate this is to choose one monitoring type or the other. So in my case, in this case here, I have unticked the monitoring in GarageBand, or alternatively, I can turn that back on. I can go back to the Evo control or the Evo mixer and on the Evo 4, I can wind the dial for monitoring all the way to the right, so I only hear GarageBand. With the Evo 8 or 16, the sliders in the mixer that are turned up for the microphone need to be turned all the way down. And that's it. So if there's anything else that you'd like us to answer for you, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the comments section. Otherwise, if there's anything else you still need, feel free to talk to us at our support. Thanks everybody for watching. Good luck and have fun and we'll see you soon.